Hey mathematicians, today I wanted to talk about an activity called Quick Five. It's an activity that can be used in a lot of different ways by a lot of different people. Uh, one way that it can be used is by teachers for a quick assessment. Another way that it can be used is by teachers or parents who are looking for an opportunity to do a fun math activity that can be done with multiple level learners at the same time. So first I'm gonna start talking about what Quick Five is, how it works, and what you need for it. Quick Five is exactly that. It is an opportunity for students to write five number sentences in math using three cards that are drawn at random from a deck of cards. My suggestion would be to always take out the face cards. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to assign some kind of value to them and that can get a little bit confusing, especially when you're asking your mathematicians to work on something in a shorter time span like you are for this activity. Um, so you're gonna take out your face cards, you're gonna leave in everything else. Your aces will represent one and you will have your aces, twos, threes, fours, fives, six, sevens, eights, nines, and tens. So you're going to have them draw three cards those three cards are gonna be the three cards that are going to be used for quick five. Now you can do the time piece to it in a variety of different ways. Um, if you are working with older mathematicians and you don't want to give them a really structured math activity, you could give them maybe a minute or so, so, and I'm talking about maybe your fifth grade, your sixth grade mathematicians, and see what kind of math they do in the first round for their quick five, their first five number sentences that they're doing. So maybe you see a lot of addition, maybe you see some subtraction, Maybe you see some use of parentheses, things like that. Well, the next way that you can step up the math activity is to create a key that will go along with what the number sentences that the mathematicians write are. So for example, we did this yesterday in my third grade Zoom lesson, and we did the first round as a free round. I had an opportunity for students to go ahead and share one number sentence that they had created. And what was really great about that was, not only was everybody sharing, but a way to get everybody to pay attention was that and they had to listen and check off a number sentence that somebody had shared that they also had recorded on their paper. And then that way, they're all listening and engaged as other mathematicians are sharing. And what's even better about it is they're hearing authentic math language as they're listening. So it might not be their turn, but they're still getting exposed to math. So what we did in the next round was I created a key. And the way that that key worked is it assigned a point value to each of the things that they could have done. So for example, I did addition was one point, subtraction was two, multiplication was three, division was four, parentheses were five, and if they used all three of the target numbers in a number sentence, they could earn six points. What was also exciting about that is they could double up. So for example, oh, sorry, excuse me. For example, what they could do is add five plus six plus seven. So there you're using all three and you're doing addition. So you'd get the points for all three. You'd also get the points for addition. When I assign this to my class next week for our Zoom meetings, I'm also going to add a point value for using math properties. So that's going to give them an opportunity, again, to start thinking about what they know about math and showing it in a way that allows other mathematicians to hear them as well. So if you're a teacher, how could you use this as a quick check-in or as a quick assessment? Well, what you could do is you could narrow down the operations that they're allowed to choose. You could add a higher point value to things that you really want them to be exploring. So for example, if you are working on a division unit or you're just coming out of your division unit and you really want your mathematicians to work on division, why don't you assign, excuse me, a higher point value to that? So that way they're going to be more likely to try to use that operation because they wanna to try to get a higher point value for that particular round. One of the other things that I liked about assigning a point value was that it still allows everybody to share what they know, but then it gives that added piece of practice of them then finding out what the point value would be for each of the number sentences that they wrote. 
coming back to the time that you're going to use for that. Just because it's called quick five doesn't mean you have to make the time interval that the activity is done a short one. You could do five minutes, you could do 10 minutes. You can adjust it based on the ability level of the mathematicians or the ability level of the group of mathematicians that you're working on. Uh, you could use something like a sand timer if you have one of those handy at home. But again, we're thinking about a math activity that allows lots of mathematicians to work on lots of important things, but also helps them to build their math mind. It's also a really great way to get other mathematicians to hear the thinking of others. So we're exposing them to authentic math language. We're providing them with a math opportunity that's differentiated by its nature. So if you have a struggling mathematician in your class, it's perfectly okay for them to share an addition or a subtraction number sentence with their work. And if you don't want to add on that extra layer of the key with a point value, you don't have to do that. So again, it's an easy way for you to differentiate. It's an easy way for mathematicians to hear lots of authentic language, and it's actually quite fun. Happy mathing.